Hi, I'm Kathy with the Dell Fuel Quilt Company. I've got another gift idea for you, and that is this little mug scarf. We've got a free pattern for this that's available on our website, and we have it in two sizes. One's for a regular size mug like this or a bigger mug. So if you're looking for an idea for a gift that you can make yourself, you might want to check this video out. Okay, to make our little mug scarf, we first need to have the pattern. And there are actually two different sizes included in this pattern. One is for your standard mug, which would be the first page of the pattern. And then the second page is for your larger mugs. You might want to just measure around your mug to see which one will be a better fit. You could always kind of adjust these two by cutting maybe one of the flying geese off or adding another flying geese to make it longer. You also want to make sure that you print your pattern on a foundation paper or a really lightweight paper that tears easily. We're also going to need some scraps of fabric. I'm going to use a white for the inside, the triangle part of the geese, and then I'm going to use this dark green for the outside pieces. So I've already got some cut. So then go ahead and just cut your patterns out. You also are going to need a button. I'm just using one I got at a local craft store. You're also going to need a piece of elastic. I'm going to end up cutting this down to about four inches. So just make sure you've got at least four inches for your elastic. So if you're new to foundation paper piecing, you just want to make sure that you keep your stitch length really short. I like to use about a 1.8 stitch length. Now the first thing you got to do is, working from the back side of the pattern, is find your piece one. On this pattern it's going to be a one, and it's going to be a white piece. You want to make sure that piece is going to cover the entire area at least go a quarter inch beyond that triangle. So I'm going to look from the back side. I'm going to hold this up to a light source, which you can't see on film, but holding it up to a window helps just align it so you can make sure that your fabric is going to cover the entire piece. And then the next piece of fabric you need is going to be the A2. I don't need too much for this. The A2 piece this is probably way too big. Um, but I'd rather go big and then cut it down because if you end up short and you flip it over, then you'll you'll regret it. So I'm going to just place it on the back here. And if you're new, it sometimes helps to turn it back over right side up and put a pin right on that sewing line. And then flip it back over. And you just want to flip this up. And you want to just make sure it's going to cover all the sides. Mine is, so I'm going to just go ahead, I'm going to hold it in place, and then I'm going to just sew right on this black line here using a 1.8 stitch length. It might be a little bit hard to see, but I did stitch right on this line. I stopped and start where that line stopped and started. Now since this is going to be such a small piece, I am going to trim down these pieces as I go. And to do that, I usually go about a quarter inch from the sewing line. You can use a ruler if you like. Sometimes that's a little helpful. And I'm just going to cut that excess off. And then before I put on the next piece, I'm going to fold this open. And I'm going to give it a little pressing. And now I'm ready for a three, which is another green piece. I'm going to use the light again to find that line. Make sure it's going to be a quarter inch over that. Again, if you want to pin that in place and then flip it open to see if you got it in all places, that's good too. So I'm going to go ahead and sew right on that line. All right, so I've got that sewn. Again, I am just going to fold back the paper. Make sure you're not cutting your paper when you trim off that excess. And I'm going to trim a quarter inch. And then just like before, I'm going to press that open. So you can kind of see where our flying geese is starting to take shape here. So I'm going to move on to A4. That's going to be another white piece. And then again, use the light of a window or a nearby light to line up your piece. And then I'm going to sew it right on that line. Again, just like before, I trim the excess and then I'm pressing it open. And I'm just going to keep going with the two greens and then do my white triangles. And I'm going to go and finish this whole piece. And then I'm going to finish the second one. And I'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. Okay, now that I've got these all sewn onto the pattern, okay, then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to trim these right on the dotted line. And I'm just going to use my ruler and the quarter inch marks to help me do that. OK, 
Okay, now that I've got these both trimmed up, I'm going to sew them together so that the points point to each other. And I'm just going to line these up carefully. And I'm going to sew right on this edge here, right on this black line. All right, I went ahead and got that sewn. And I did sew all the way to both sides of the edges. And then you could open up and you can see how that looks. So then the next step is just to remove all the paper. This is probably the most painstaking step. All right, now that I've got all the paper off, I'm just gonna go ahead and press, and press the seam. All right, once you've got that pressed up, the next step is to quilt it. I'm not gonna quilt much on here. I'm pretty much just gonna go right down the center and just do one line of quilting because it's such a small piece. Okay, now that I've got this quilted, which is one strip down the center, I'm just gonna go ahead and just trim and squirt my sides. And the last few steps are, we're gonna put a piece of elastic and I'm gonna cut this so it's four inches. And I'm just gonna make a loop and I'm gonna sew that right to the back here. Then after I sew that, I'm gonna put the binding on. All right, so I've got my loop of elastic sewn on and you wanna go over that a few times so it stays nice and put. And then I'm gonna take the binding and I just went with a two and a half inch strip and I fold it in half. And I'm gonna do this machine sewn on, and I'm gonna just sew it from the back, and then I'm gonna flip it over. So you're gonna, whatever binding method you like to use, go ahead and use that on this one. And when you're sewing your binding on, just make sure that you keep the loop down so that you're able to use it later on. Now I've got this little mug scarf basically done. I've got the entire binding on and I got that loop exposed here. And now I just need to figure out where to put the button. So I've got my mug here. I'm just gonna wrap this around and then kind of figure out from here, where do I wanna put that? I think I'm gonna put about right here so then I'm just going to remember where that spot is. And I'm just gonna sew that button on. Okay, and then once you have the button on, you can seal it up. And then your little mug scarf is all finished. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and visit us at DelphiaQuiltCo.com. Have a happy holiday.